Hey Dirt Magicians! Today we're going to be talking about eight amazing trellis ideas that we've discovered in both Kelly and Burton's yard, so we're going to take you there. Trellising is an amazing thing to do to the garden as it increases your vertical growing so you can grow more. It also reduces pest pressure as you can see all of those pests on the different things and it reduces diseases as those veggies are no longer growing on that wet soil. We've also created an amazing freebie of all of the vegetables you can grow and what exactly they need for trellising. We at Dirt Magicians love having you learn from other gardeners, so let us help you learn by peeking over the garden beds. So we're here in Burns Yard, and all of the trellises that we want to cover today are incredibly functional and accessible and very cost effective. We didn't want, you, we know you're not a farmer, and so it's just something small and simple. So we wanted to make sure we touch on that. Uh, and also, we've got some really cool, fun ones as well that we just thought were really neat that we wanted to show you. These different trellises are also grown in different growing mediums. So we've got things in pots, we've got raised garden beds, we've got the native soil. So it kind of gives you an idea of all these different ways you can use trellises. So the first trellis I want to talk about is right behind me and this is Burn and Ashton's cucumber trellis. Uh, so cucumbers, when you think about it, the plant is quite heavy with them. Cucumbers aren't light so it needs to be quite sturdy. Trellising cucumbers is also a really good idea as they're very susceptible to powdery mildew which loves the wet conditions along the soil. So having them up off the ground means a lot more airflow and will slow down something like powdery mildew. When we have this trellis, as you can see, it's quite sturdy. There's really good posts and they've got kind of thicker plastic here for the little tendrils that want to climb up, but then can also, when it's hanging off, can support a cucumber. How much did it cost? Um, it was pretty cheap altogether. I think uh, this, this stuff was the most expensive. It comes in a roll just like this. And as you can see, I still have a lot left and I've used like at least half of it. It's like 40 bucks, I think. Um, yeah, not expensive at all. And then just buy a bunch of stakes and you can get stakes for really cheap and in multiple packs. And how did you build it? Um, I took the stakes, I hammered them into the soil really, really deep, just as deep as you can go. Um, and then I, I, I spaced them out. I measured how long I want this. I clipped it to the right spots and then I just held it there and stapled them in place with the staple gun. So our second trellis is here for winter squash. So certain types of squash can be trellis, but things like zucchini and summer squash can't because they grow bushy, whereas our winter squash are vines. Like cucumbers, also really susceptible to powdery mildew. So being able to get them up off of the soil will kind of help prevent that disease. It also makes it easier to look for pests like squash vine borer and squash bugs, as we can see more of the plant as we go along. So for a trellis for squash, it's got to be really sturdy because think about how big those squash can get so they need to be able to hang off here. So Ashton and Byrne have done a really good job of creating kind of this like base from which everything can hang and then the squash too can go up and over in this sort of archway while having a really solid base up here to keep this very sturdy for everything and like the cucumbers little tiny tendrils as well. What materials did you use for the squash trellis? Yeah so for the squash trellis I used the same uh, chicken wire type of wiring here but if I did it again I would choose something stronger. This is a little too malleable um, because when the squashes are actually growing it's putting a lot of weight on them um, and then the frame I used I just had a two by four going across like this another two by four here that kind of I uh, screwed it onto the bed and then a big four by four that we uh, cut uh, uh, like made it into a spike and then we just hammered that down as deep as we could into the soil. Where did you buy all the materials? Um, just had the four by fours and the two by fours at home. You can just get them at any place. And then uh, this, this trellis stuff at like Rona or Home Depot. So our third trellis and our last one here in Vernon Ashton's yard is for peas. So peas are a lot lighter than the other vegetables that we've touched on. So the trellis doesn't have to be quite nearly as strong. They can get quite tall though. And they do like the cucumbers and the winter squash have those little tendrils. So they need little tiny pieces to be able to wrap around. So what they've done here is they've got sort of two stakes on either side. And then with, with this side, we've got little tiny metal pieces that the peas can go and then here they're string. So it's kind of cool on that the peas have been able to straddle these two and stay completely straight. How did you build the pea trellis? So for the pea trellis, I just took the stakes, hammered them in really deep at the distance I want. And then I cut the chicken wire to match that and then just stapled the chicken wire on. Um, and then for the rope, I start at the bottom, wrap it around really tight. And then I go to the next stake and I wrap that around really tight. And then I'll go back, 
and just keep going up in a diagonal, diagonal formation and make sure the rope is really tight. And my mistake, I actually didn't use strong enough rope. So this has been there for a season now and it's starting to break. So I'd recommend using some really strong rope. All right, so all three of the trellises that we've covered here are in uh, raised beds, whereas at Kelly's, we're going to look at some in containers and then as well as right in the ground. One thing I will note that will help kind of determine how big your trellis has to be is the more soil rooting depth there is, the larger the plant is able to get. So if you're growing in a smaller container, you're likely not going to have to make as large of a trellis because the roots are going to determine how big that plant can get. So now we're here in Kelly's yard. Kelly grows everything in containers, which adds another unique element to the and we're going to show you three really inexpensive and functional trellises and two really cool artistic ones that can be a bit more expensive but they're also very functional. All right so we're in Kelly's yard and this is the first trellis I want to talk to you about and the fourth one in our video today um, and this is what I call the teepee trellis. So this is literally just bamboo stakes kind of in a triangle formation and then tied together at the top and then you can run string or something around the outside. And this trellis is really good for plants that have tendrils that aren't too heavy either, as it's not super strong. And they can go on these little strings here and wrap their little tendrils around. So plants that you could do could be something like cucumelons, peas, and beans. What materials did you use for the teepee? The teepee is made out of some bamboo poles and um, some jute uh, twine. And where did you buy these? I bought them all at Dollarama. How much did it all cost? It was no more than $5. And how did you build it? I put three of the bamboo stakes um, kind of in a triangle and uh, uh, tied them up at the very top and then wrapped the twine around um, to give some supports from the base. So the next two trellises I want to talk about use a feature that almost every backyard has, which is a fence. This is a great place to put a trellis because it's strong, it's tall, and it's quite sturdy. And as long as you put some kind of structure that allows the plants to climb up, like this extendable Dollarama wooden thing, then we can have some kind of trellis. So here, there wasn't enough light at the base of the fence for Kelly to plant something, so she installed a gutter. The gutter isn't very deep. So you'd only put a shallow root plant. So a plant where the roots don't have to go too deep into the soil. So she's done sweet peas here. And as you can see, it's slowly turning into this beautiful green and flowery wall. And just sort of one note, most vegetables kind of have deeper roots than what you'd be able to have here. So this is more for tendrilling flowers, maybe not vegetables, but worth a try. See how far you get. What materials did you use for that fence trellis? So for my gutter garden, I bought a um, strip of uh, gutter for a garage or a house um, from Home Depot and uh, filled that with dirt and then bought an accordion trellis from Dollarama and then had a um, piece of trellis mounted um, on the fence behind it to help it climb a little bit taller. And how much did it all cost? The gutter was about 10 to $15, um, including the clamps. It's just made out of like a vinyl material. And um, the accordion trellis was about three fifty dollars from Dollarama. And um, the, the bigger piece of trellis I actually found in the neighborhood. So that was a free, <laughs> a bonus. And where did you buy all of these? Home Depot for the uh, garter garden base. And the Dollarama was the trellis. How did you build it? I just used some screws um, to mount the gutter to the fence and then propped the accordion trellis into the gutter and uh, used some screws on the fence as well. The sixth trellis and the second one using a fence, we've got beans in planter boxes. This is great because beans can grow up to six feet tall and Kelly here has installed some plastic netting so that the beans can weave their way through being nice and supported. What materials did you use to make this trellis? So for the fence trellis, I um, used some plastic netting, some small plastic netting and two large bamboo poles um, and then some uh, long rectangular planter boxes to put the um, beans in at the bottom. Where did you buy all these materials? The um, planter boxes were from Home Depot, just long rectangular ones that you could use in a variety of places in your garden. And um, the plastic netting was from Dollarama. How much did it all cost? It cost, that cost no more than uh, $10. And how did you build it? So for the um, bamboo poles, we had to put them in uh, against the fence and we hammered them down kind of deep into the ground and then used some brackets on the fence that we had had left over from another project to hold them um, tight. So our seventh trellis is this beautiful archway that Kelly's got growing peas up. This is great because at the top, 
she can use gravity and actually get the peas even further. And in order to make this functional, there's actually string that's in between the different metal pieces to allow the little tendrils of the peas to be able to climb. This one's one of my favorites and it also provides a bit of shade while gardening. Right. What gave you this idea to build this greenhouse way? I wanted to have a place that I could connect these two planter boxes together. So I was looking for some kind of archway um, to go uh, over from one side to the other. And where did you get the archway? This one is actually from Amazon. Um, I had seen a friend use one in her garden for peas to climb over. And so I uh, checked out Amazon and found this one there. And how much did it all cost? This was about $55 for this one. Um, and they showed a bunch of different ways that you could use it for um, weddings, uh, having an archway at the front of a ceremony um, or just outside in a, in a garden or in a situation like this where you're connecting two spaces. Our eighth trellis, and my absolute favorite because it's a complete ode to Kelly's artistic nature, is this wrought iron mannequin trellis. So she found this herself, and the only way that it works is by having different poles or something for these beans to climb up. And then eventually it'll be kind of a green dress and keep climbing up here. I'm so excited to see what it looks like in the end. Where did you find this and what gave you this idea to build a skirt dress? For the mannequin trellises, uh, someone in our neighborhood was giving them away. Um, I saw them as a really beautiful form and an opportunity to grow um, some flowers or plants up. So I bought a plastic container that was big enough for the base and filled it with dirt um, and planted some seeds around um, some bamboo stakes that would guide it up into the dress form to hopefully create a, um, a flower and a food bust. I also always look for opportunities in my garden um, to add some creativity and artistry, um, looking at different colors and um, different composition of flowers. I am an art teacher during the school year, so from September till June, I um, teach art to high school students, and then in the summers I get to translate that creativity into my garden here. Well, Dirt Magicians, that's the end of our video. I hope that this video kind of opened your mind to the possibilities of ways you could trellis or gave you completely new ideas that we've not even thought of before. Uh, if you did like our video, harvest that subscribe button and help up and coming content creators like us. Also, remember to download that freebie about all of the different types of vegetables that you can trellis and how to do it and what they need. At Dirt Magicians, we love helping you learn by having people peek over the garden fence. So let us help you and come along on the journey with us.